life. People's Platform. Good evening <coughs> and a warm welcome to the People's Platform. Uh, our topic of discussion tonight is the role of the police in upholding the rule of law. I'm pleased to welcome to the studio attorney at law Nuan Bobage. Good evening and welcome, Good Nuan. Uh, Nuan, now there is an issue in Sri Lanka in that we don't have a current. Uh, Inspector General of Police, a uh, head of police. Uh, we have to make do with an acting IGP. Uh, recently, a program called Yuktia was launched to conduct um, island wide drug raids. Uh, we are told that 13,000 individuals ha have been arrested under this program. Uh, recently, the Minister of Public Security uh, made a statement which many factions have considered to be problematic. Uh, so several things happening. We're seeing all of these um, melodramatic events unfold on television screens, on newspapers. Speak to us about all the implications, all the facets of of this um, incident <coughs> yeah of course now as you correctly pointed out now recently uh, president uh, ranil vikram singh appointed neshabandhu tenukon as the acting igp so according to the constitution the constitutional council has to approve whatever name suggested by the president for last uh, two three months actually on several occasions the president uh, gave his nomination for the appointment of IGP, but the Constitution, Constitution Council has not approved. Uh, therefore, now uh, what has happened recently, this name was suggested as the acting IGP. Soon after he was appointed act, as acting IGP, now there is a mission called Yuktia. Uh, so they are targeting drug tra traffickers and uh, to curtail this drug uh, issue in Sri Lanka. That's what they are saying. But of course, uh, he has been working as the uh, Deputy Inspector General for, I think, two or three years for Western Province. So the police actually, they all, always they have that legitimate power to arrest people and bring them to the court and uh, dispense justice. So that, that power is vested with them. Mm. But uh, now this, this current mission is concerned, of course there is a d doubt that uh, as to why this kind of with media attention and various statements we have seen from the Minister Tiran Alas and uh, most of these missions that they are carrying out with media, so it's, it's something dramatic. So uh, that has creating a doubt that whether it is uh, another attempt to actually insist uh, constitutional council to ap appoint approve his name as the permanent IGP. So my personal view is that is the ulterior motive behind that. That doesn't say that uh, action should be, prompt action should be taken against drug traffickers and this drug mafia. But uh, way that they are doing it, uh, the main objective is not to uh, curtail this drug issue, but uh, there is ulterior motive as I pointed out. And the statements of the, uh, the Minister Tiran Alas, the danger is there is a justification for extrajudicial killings. So extrajudicial killings, you know the state, the government cannot act as barbarian. No? The, uh, there are authorities, the enforcement of law is very important. So uh, what the so-called uh, rule of law, the everything is there. So as far as these concepts are concerned, especially the liberal democratic concepts, we know the, at the, when the capitalist system is emanating, the certain uh, concepts like uh, uh, democracy, uh, liberal democracy, fundamental rights, oh, these things also uh, came to the surface and actually the people are benefited out of that. So at least they have to respect these concepts uh, like presumption of innocence, fundamental rights, liberty of the people. So if they are uh, if they are not ready to respect that, this system gradually going to the barbaric system. So that indication is very bad because as far as track record is concerned for last uh, uh, ruling governments are concerned, it's a very bad track records as Sri Lanka is concerned regarding extrajudicial killings and disappearances. From the year 1994, there are various pressures before the international community to stop this. 
Therefore, now once again that indication giving this government is also not ready to respect the rule of law and at the same time respect the fundamental rights of the people. So that indication is very bad. Therefore, we have to be we have to address being law abiding citizens of the country should address this part. Nuan, freedom from torture is a non-derogable right of every citizen. Um, I'd like to pit that against the role of the police in, in ensuring that uh, suspects, uh, people they arrest, people who are at the police, in police custody, are, are ensured their rights as well. Speak to us in, in the context also of the presumption of innocence. Yeah, of course. Now, uh, Human Rights Commission, of Sri Lanka, according to them, 90% of the torture complaints are against the police. Uh, with hundreds of cases being reported each year, according to them, in 2015, it was 420 cases. Mm. 2016, 450 cases. And 2017, there were 380 cases. Now, recently, there's a judgment one, one, two weeks ago, the Deshwanda the, Tendakon is a sixth respondent that is also a torture case and the Supreme Court has been granted massive compensation for the victim. So this practice has been there since 1970s, you, you know 1988 after 1988-89 uprising. In the year 1994, the Sri Lankan government was compelled to give a pledge to the uh, UNHRC uh, to take prompt action against these torture incidents and extrajudicial killings. Then, uh, even after that, in the year 2000, uh, 2000 as uh, yeah, in the year 2008, 2000, 2009, uh, Minister Dinesh Gunawardhan uh, in the Parliament, they, they, in the Hansard, he, he said that there are 32 people uh, died in the custody of the police. In the year 2008, 26 people had died in the police custody. So. Now, once the court has given permission to remand a person or uh, court has given uh, the custody to the police, then there can't be killings no? because uh, that deliberate killings, we, 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 we call it as extrajudicial killings, it is, it is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So it, in a democratic society, you can't do that. But now the justification is there are always if, if there's involvement of drugs, if, we, if there's an involvement of LTT, uh, the society also uh, were ready to justify these killings. But what was the ultimate result? You know, during the war period, of course, in North and East, there were various extrajudicial killings and disappearances. The South society sometimes justified that. But it has not been stopped from there. Subsequently, it has come to the South. Then they abducted and killed uh, human rights activists that Lalit Kumar Virraju and journalists like Lasanta Vikram Tunga. So it has come to the south, irrespective of the race. So that is the nature. Then you know uh, the former Navy commander was uh, indicted in the High Court for abduction and killing 11 youth. They were not LTT carders, they were not drug traffickers. But if we justify this system, the next victim might be you. So therefore, we have to be very careful. In a society, police is there, courts are there, using the public funds only these institutions are maintaining. Therefore, their accountability must be there. So through a judicial process only, you can punish the person. And the presumption of innocence, the concept has been developed in the world against the feudal system, against the crown after protracted struggle mm -hmm. from the people for the democracy. So once it has been established, before court, until you proven, proven guilty, you are innocent. That's mm -hmm. a concept. Mm -hmm. Why that concept is very important, of course, with the, inter with the, the, the executive or other uh, state authorities cannot take law into their own hand and punish the people. Ultimately, democratic rights should be vested with the people. So therefore, uh, the, my main concern is uh, when we go through this track record, from at least from 1994, the, the system has been deteriorating, so there's no improvement in the society. So, you know, during the COVID period, mm -hmm. this has been continued using the COVID. During the war period, th these extrajudicial claims were continued using the uh, race, uh, using uh, this uh, LTT uh, incident. Then uh, now they are doing the same thing using this drug issue. 
So whatever issue, first of all, you have to respect the fundamental rights. Let's respect the liberty of the people. Subject to that only, you can take whatever action. Sure. We are in conversation with attorney at law Nuan Bobage. We're going for a break. We'll be right back. The People's Platform. TV One, Sri Lanka's premier entertainment channel. In support of Sri Lanka's unique tradition of art and design, presents The Genius of the Place, the story of Jeffrey Bava, a film by Abdel Aziz. Exclusively aired in Sri Lanka on TV One, January 7th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. TV One, TV for life. Special statement by the President on reconciliation in March reiterates call for support from all parties to build the country. Gehelia Rabukwala's statement on the purchase of human immunoglobulin produced before court. Crime ring sends Sri Lankan youth to the hands of Chinese criminal gangs through Dubai. Operation Nuktia recommences. Ethiopia also goes bankrupt, defaults on bonds. Will Yemen's Houthi rebels disrupt commercial shipping in the Red Sea? India sends three warships to the Arabian Sea. TV One, TV for life. The People's Platform. Welcome back. It's just after Christmas and we're discussing the role of the police in ensuring and upholding uh, the rule of law. We're uh, talking to attorney at law Nuan Bopage. Uh, Nuan, uh, let's discuss this concept of police brutality. Um, it's deeply problematic, um, but it's constantly an issue that has been spoken of throughout the years uh, and it doesn't show any signs of abating um, there was a recent uh, report well several reports by the human rights commission of sri lanka which you just alluded to several other reports as well which speak about this um, talk to us about how problematic it is what do we do to rectify it yeah, of course, uh, in terms of the constitution, the inhuman and degrading punishments and the torture uh, is one of the main thing that addressed by the constitution as a fundamental rights of a person uh, is not to expose for these kind of mm -hmm. brutality. So uh, the problem is when we go through the UNHRC reports and the Asian Human Rights Commission reports and Amnesty reports, throughout there are allegations against the police of mm. Sri Lanka. So um, we know on the ground also <coughs> being lawyers we have been experienced in that. Uh, one side is of course uh, during the police custody there are various incidents, various killings and uh, the uh, torture incidents uh, were taking place uh, throughout uh, for the last few decades. At the same time as we discussed the next level is the extrajudicial killings. So. Uh, uh, even in the Nuremberg case and the Premurti Manamperi case, the court has specifically said if you are now basically the uh, the higher ranks only giving these commands, mm. then uh, police officers or other uh, law uh, enforcing institutions who are the lower rank uh, officers only carrying out these commands. Mm. First of all, if the uh, the the very uh, the concept which has been developed in Premurti Manamperi case is 
whoever giving that command if it is against the illegal if, if, if against the fundamental rights if it is illegal you are not uh, uh, the, yeah you can't compel yes. to uh, enforce these decisions so however now we know the ramsirasi case mm -hmm. and the reason fund that uh, supreme court judgment ultimately these uh, law officers uh, they uh, they have to pay compensations and uh, they have been punished so the first thing is uh, even though the, the uh, senior police officers or politicians they have given their commands with because of the certain ulterior motives you should not uh, uh, enforce these decisions it's very important at the same time police army and these institutions are concerned ultimately those institutions are running by the public funds mm. people only pay in them right. so therefore they are accountable the number one is the main power is vested with the people you have to respect to that therefore it is very important to have independent police commission and independent institution to safeguard the fundamental rights of the people otherwise this will continue because uh, you know the this uncouth political system in the country always paved the way uh, to police and other institution to violate the fundamental rights of the people when a citizen has a grievance he or she should uh, feel the sense of safety to go to the police and make a complaint uh, with the expectation with the legitimate expectation that his or her grievance will be resolved in a in a just and equitable manner exactly do we have that exactly now uh, you you put a very important question now as far as the layman or uh, the the citizen is concerned sometimes the people think the law is police so that is the most closest institution for the people so in sri lankan when you go to the police the uh, from the first of first occasion uh, you will become a victim uh, now especially the incidents against the women so uh, rape incident or any other incident once they go to the police if if a girl is raped then for the second time you will be raised um, uh, raped inside the police for so that is that is what happening in this country. in terms of victimization victimization mm -hmm. is so therefore uh, now these uh, police officers actually as far as the uh, uh, how to handle these incidents uh, how to you how you treat the public is concerned actually they have not been properly trained that that lacuna is still there in the country so uh, the most important thing is the police should be uh, the when when they carrying out these civil activities there must be well trained police officers at the same time we know since we are working with these certain police officers now uh, th these poli due to this current economic and social system they are also victimized so th we have to now uh, when you go to the police when we think about their way of their duties they are so victimized they are always under stress now we are, they are always discharging their stress uh, towards the public mm -hmm. so that is happening so that is that's also one reason for this torture and other uh, incidents therefore we have to take all both aspects number one police should respect the people and uh, they should respect the uh, judicial system and the law uh, on the other hand the police officers are concerned the police uh, officers are concerned of course due to the current prevailing economic and political system they also victimized so ultimately uh, they put their pressure uh, towards the people and that also uh, contributed to this kind of incident therefore we have to think about both sides and uh, you know uh, these uh, this current economic and political and social si situation also uh, contributing lot for these kind of incidents in terms of uh, reformation of the sri lanka police no one um, just like you said uh, if we look at things from the point of view of police officers especially those in junior ranks um, in terms of their um, promotions in terms of their uh, deployment in terms of their salaries don't you think that police officers need to be paid well because they are they are discharging a very important role so they have to have that security uh, in terms of um, their their pay packet 
right? Because this this in turn will avoid other issues um, like a tendency to um, uh, solicit bribes. Of course, uh, police and you know the state councils, the attorney general department officers and ju officers of judiciary. So uh, when they carrying out their duties, of course they should be paid more and uh, their salaries should be increased. So through that only we can actually avoid certain corruption uh, activities. So the police is concerned, the situation is very worse. You know, the, they, 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 are, they are given very low salary and their service is concerned. Sometimes they have to work 24 hours. So uh, with these things, of course, I think they have a struggle to improve their service. So rather than, uh, now you know, uh, the senior ranks are concerned always, uh, way that they are treating to lower ranks, we know these things. Mm. So with that, they are all, always under pressure. So they must have an internal struggle to uplift their service, because ultimately, uh, when the people, uh, uh, now at one stage, the people will not tolerate these things. Oh, well, now, now you know, uh, one when they face one or two incidents, for the third incident, actually, uh, sometimes they might uh, react to that. So then uh, the police officers are concerned, there must be an internal struggle to uplift their service, otherwise uh, situation will be getting worse. So uh, at the same time, as, as you correctly pointed out, uh, now uh, these, uh, you know, the dignity is very important. So you are wearing a uniform, so uh, people basically respect for that uniform. Now, as lawyers, when we go before a judicial officer, why we bow down? Because we always the, think that the by, uh, impartiality is there, uh, the uh, concepts like uh, rules of natural justice is there. Yeah. When we feel that is not there, if we feel it's bias, we need not to respect them. Nothing is beyond the people. E judicial officers, police, and these institutions, the all are accountable to the people. So if the judiciary is corruption, corrupted, if the police is corrupted, people need not to anymore respect them. So therefore, from the top to bottom, they should understand this. Uh, you are accountable for the people. So you have to, if you want to uh, earn that respect, that dignity is very important. If the government or other the politicians are not giving that dignity, you must always understand there is an ulterior motive behind that. Because if the police is not independent, the other side is, of course, the politicians want to control you. Politicians controlling you for the sake of their power. So ultimately, you, the, the, the victimized part is the people and the, these officers. Therefore, we need a concert of effort, the collective struggle to change the system, actually how to bring these independent institutions, how to uh, assure the, the fundamental rights and the democratic norms of the society. So we should have a collective fight. Uh, the, always the barrier is the politicians. Now that's why these, always the politicians only making the statement. The, uh, the minister said that you do whatever uh, things that I am commanding, I, I am ready to safeguard you. Mm. That's a very bad message. You, you can, you can of course, you can safeguard the police officer until they are enforcing lawful orders. So what the minister says, even the order is not lawful, you do it, I will safeguard your rights. So that's a very bad message. Don't take these kind of messages. So you are accountable to the citizen, accountable to the people. Therefore, we should have a, a collective effort to change the system. When we speak about the importance of um, ensuring checks and balances, um, independent commissions play a key role, and this was provided for by the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. Then there were some problematic issues with the 20th, and then the 21st as yeah. well came out. Um, what is the status now when it comes to the National Police Commission, for example? Yeah. So after the 17th uh, Amendment to the Constitution, the independent, independent commissions were introduced. Mm -hmm. As far as democracy is concerned, it was a good move. But uh, when we go, when five years down the line, we know what happened from the 19th Amendment and uh, the, how they uh, completely 
turn the that particular move and once again took power to the hand of the president we know what happened during the last five amendments of the constitution now recently what happened after 20th uh, amendment now the police commission is not there anymore public service service commission only once again handling the police affairs so as far as the police is concerned my view is there must be an independent police commission earlier also the powers vested with the commission is very limited mm -hmm. that is for their promotions and internal uh, and only internal issues but those powers should be expanded so uh, whatever uh, uh, whatever incident that taken place uh, that can be extrajudicial killings of uh, police brutality uh, torture there must be broad powers with the uh, this particular commission to have an inquiry and bring them before the uh, court of justice so at the same time i think institution like uh, human rights commissions always they make in statements but in, when uh, there are decisions of the human rights commission but they don't uh, th there is no mechanism to enforce these decisions so human rights commission should be given broad powers to uh, they are, that decision should have a uh, uh, there must be a mechanism to enforce these orders of the human rights commission mm -hmm. so especially the police commission human rights commission if we can strengthen these commissions through the public uh, demand i think it's very important it might, it might be a very good move uh, to ensure the fundamental rights of the people. So, uh, you know, all the constitutional amendments were taken place because of a uh, uh, political power to high, as to how uh, remain their political power and as to how uh, sort out their political issues, not for the sake of the people. Mm. So, therefore, when we analyze most of the constitutional amendments, ultimately, uh, public, the citizens were the victims of these amendments. Therefore, uh, there must be a concrete uh, effort uh, to somehow uh, ensure the fundamental rights and uh, and the fundamental rights of the people through making uh, independent commissions. My final question to you goes back to my first question to you uh, at the start of this interview. The role of the Constitutional Council cannot be trivialized, no one. But over exactly. the uh, recent few weeks, We've seen this trivialization of the role of the Constitutional Council. Ultimately, um, we don't have a, an IGP, an Inspector General of Police uh, for Sri Lanka. The Constitutional Council needs to um, recommend, uh, approve the uh, a name. Uh, speak to us about that aspect. Exactly. In terms of the Constitution, once the President nominated, person for this uh, IGP post or other po other uh, posts which are in the schedule to the constitution the recommendation must be there from the constitutional council so they have a duty uh, when they are the the ultimately whatever decision taken by them uh, the people should be benefited out of that so mm -hmm. that is the main motive of uh, this implementation of the constitutional council I think they have to discharge that duty, uh, taking cognizance of the history of these people and what are the allegation level against them as to how they treated the people. So it is paramount important them to think about that. So I think uh, Constitutional Council should discharge that duty in a proper manner. And uh, there are attempts to, as you said, trivialize these powers which vested with the Constitutional Council because you know after introducing the Constitutional Council from 17th Amendment twice uh, uh, the, the politicians attempted to take that power once again to the President's hand. Mm -hmm. So uh, throughout that uh, that uh, issue is there. So uh, taking cognizance of these facts I think the Constitutional Council always uh, should act uh, very carefully uh, when they are when they uh, approve in these nominations all right thank you very much uh, for clarifying a lot of matters actually th uh, that are in the public domain thank you Nuan for uh, coming to thank the studio much. on your um, day off <laughs> yes. uh, thank you for watching us we'll see you again uh, tomorrow good night <laughs>